actually have a question. Yes, yes. Um, so regarding the ash to method um, for the flexible pavement. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, so there is a chart that we. Um, yeah, this chart in slide 26. Uh -huh. oh, this, uh, is the, this is not a. So this is the rigid one. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yes. Um, I'm going to introduce the uh, details about this one for to finish the rest of the contents today. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna learn how to use it. Uh, uh, I just have a, a general question. Uh, what if uh, my value is greater than, for example, um, the the load transfer or the drainage coefficient? So they have a range from 0.6 to 1.3, for example, for the CD. What if I have 1.4 or 1.5? Usually that won't happen. That, that, that's, uh, that's the real situation. So if we, if we have, you can use the, uh, uh, you can try to just extend the line with the, uh, with this kind of uh, log scales. Uh, that's the way for you to uh, find out the approximate value. But uh, you should know that the, uh, this kind of design chart uh, it's actually from some empirical data that's based on the um, uh, some typical values of all those variables. If it's uh, higher than that value, uh, you should be paying attention about it. And to be honest, in reality, when we do the design of the field experiment uh, for the uh, pavement, uh, we want to control the uh, the draining coefficients, the load transfer coefficient, and so on to make sure that they are under the typical ranges, under some um, the ranges that we can capture in this in this chart. Those will cover most of the situations. So uh, that's that's the uh, that's the um, the one of the important note you have to keep in your mind for the actual project. Uh, for for the, some specific corner situations, that is, uh, we have some very extreme values about those coefficients, you might need to rely on the uh, some more advanced methods. Uh, there are some, uh, uh, say, the uh, mechanistic methods which can deal with all the situations. We also have some um, um, softwares where they, they can handle a wide range of the situation for the uh, human design. Uh, but I don't have time to int go introduce this kind of the softwares. Uh, it's called the Darwin. Uh, unfortunately, our university does not have the valid license for that. That's the reason I did not uh, um, introduce the uh, software in this class. Uh, if you are interested, well, in the future, you pro probably can contact me and I can give you more uh, materials. Yeah, OK, thank you so much. That's good. That's a very good questions. Uh, for all these materials you learn here, uh, the technologies might not be the uh, latest one, but it will be the uh, the uh, theoretical. It will include all the theoretical insights. And for most of the uh, uh, softwares or the method applied nowadays, they rely on this and do some slightly modification to adapt to the uh, the new technologies they have to adapt to the. Uh, situations, the uh, weather conditions, the uh, uh, or the specific soil materials, uh, the properties of the materials that you can apply it uh, in the real project. So uh, it will be there. Will, there will be some uh, gap there, but uh, uh, when you are in the future, if you are working on the uh, pavement engineer, you should uh, follow their protocols. But uh, you you will. I'm pretty sure that you can understand why they do this. In the in the design, if you have already taken this class, okay. Uh, so uh, so with that, I will start lecture today. And uh, um, for the lecture today, I will quickly go through the uh, the slides. Uh, for the rigid pavement design, that will be the uh, we have ten pages left. I will go through them quickly, and then I will reserve the time for the final review. So let me try to expand this one. So the um, <clears throat> in the previous lectures we have introduced all the <coughs> excuse me. I have introduced all the uh, variables applied for the 
ready development design. And then for the design procedure, uh, we need to follow the five steps. First of all, we have to determine the uh, composite and the effective coefficient of the subgrade reaction. That will be the K values, uh, which has already been, uh, you need to use the chart that we provided previously. And then we need to uh, estimate the design serviceability loss as the delta PSI, uh, depending on the initial and the terminal serviceability. And uh, after that, one of the key parties estimate the uh, ESAL, the traffic volumes. Uh, and then we need to uh, select the level of the reliability and the overall standard deviation, which would be the one we uh, we have to set for the uh, for the rigid payment. And then we're going to use the normal graph to estimate the thickness of the PCC slab. This one is actually simple compared with the um, actual method uh, for the flexible payment. In the flexible payment, we need to determine the thickness of each layers, but here we just need to identify the thickness of the slab. Um, so he, this is the normal graph that we're going to apply for the um, rigid payment. Uh, assuming that we have already finished all the estimations about the uh, effective uh, modulus of the subgrade reaction, and then depending on the uh, Elastic modulus of this lab, uh, which will represent the uh, the lines. So uh, each line will represent one uh, value of the elastic modulus uh, in million psi. So first, for example, for the first one, uh, for the top line represent the seven million psi, and the bottom one represent the three million psi. Then based on the value calculated about the uh, k. You can then select a line uh, from the uh, elastic modulus and find out the point in the y-axis, and then go to check the uh, the modulus of the rupture. This is one specific specific variable applied for the rigid permit. Uh, find out the turning point, and then go to the load transfer coefficient. Find another turning point, and then. Uh, go to check the drainage coefficient CD, get the uh, another point as the match line. So this is the first part, the first point you're gonna do. And then the match line, the match line will, will be applied here. This is the match line. That's the one we get from the previous page. Uh, for the other part, we need to check the probability, the reliability and the, uh, the traffic volume. So start with the reliability, uh, the value of the R and the standard deviation. You can find out on the point in the uh, turning line, and then double check with the uh, with the traffic flow. So this is the ESAL. You can you can extend this line to reach to the uh, one point at the x-axis of this chart. And uh, for on the left, start from the match line we obtained from the previous page. You need to check with this one with the uh, serviceability loss, and then uh, extend this line to the y-axis. That will be another point. Starting with the x and y-axis, you can find out the intersection of this of these two points you defined in this chart, and uh, the uh, the one the line which will be closed to you will be the thickness of the PCC slab. So in this in this chart, each line represents one one thickness. Uh, for example, for this for this uh, example, we get the uh, value around uh, nine inches. So that means that the PCC slab we designed should be nine inches. So this is the way for us to use the uh, normal graph to identify the uh, thickness of the PCC slab. Uh, I'm going to use one example to give you a better understanding about how we're going to use it. So in this example, we assume that the K, the effective K value is a uh, 22, uh, 72 PCI, and the elastic modulus of the concrete slab is uh, 5 million PSI, and uh, uh, modulus of the um, of the uh, of the rupture would be uh, 650 PSI. We have J equal to 3.2, CD is 1.0, delta PSI is 1.7. And we also know R is 95%, S0 is 0.25, and uh, ESAL is 5.1 million. 
and then we can use the normal graph to identify the uh, sickness. So start from the uh, effective uh, our subgrade modulus of the subgrade reaction K, we find the value is uh, 72. So this is the, the, the value here, with the 72. With 72, you can then go to draw on the vertical line. And then you also know the uh, the the uh, elastic modulus of the concrete slab is uh, 5 million. So EC is uh, 5 million, which means that I need to choose the uh, third line. That will be the 5 million. And then at this line, you go to this one. Go to the y-axis. That will be the first point you, uh, for you achieve. And then uh, the problem provided with us about the modulus of the uh, rupture as 600, 650, which would be in a point here, connecting this point. Uh, I'll just say that A and B, you will go to the uh, extend this straight line to the turning point, say the point C, and then check the uh, load transfer coefficient for the third one. Uh, we found the value is 3.2. You need to find out where this 3.2 is. So this, this one is 3.0, this one is 3.5. So this some, something in between will be uh, 3.2. So you get this one and extend this one to the uh, second turning line. Say that it's D. And then we need to check the uh, the drainage coefficient. That is, uh, we get the values of 1.0 from the assumption. And in this case, 1.0 is at this point. And then you draw on the line from D and the uh, drainage coefficient, you get the point. Uh, E from the match line, which is around 74. Uh, and now let's go to see the uh, other part. From the match line, which is the point E that we obtained in the previous page, uh, we check the uh, design serviceability loss and we find the value is 1.7 from the assumption. So that will be some point around between 1.0 and 1.2, which is close to 1.2. And then draw on a straight line. It's gonna reach to the uh, vertical axis of the chart or the design chart. Say that this is a F, the point F. And uh, uh, we will stop here. And then let's go to see the uh, reliability and the, the uh, traffic volume. The reliability we said is uh, 95%. So this is a 95%. And we know the uh, the overall standard deviation is set as 0.25. In this example, so you're gonna find out where point 25 is. That will be the uh, point between point two and point uh, three, and then you get the uh, turning point. You find out the uh, the line, this the, the intersection between the line and the uh, turning line, which you will say that is uh, the point G, and uh, uh, you will also need to check the what's the valence of the traffic. Uh, in this problem is a uh, 5.1 million. So find out the 5.1. Um, that will be some point around here. Um, sorry that it's not joining quite perfectly. There is some shift there. Uh, and then extend this line. You're gonna reach to the uh, to the uh, point. Uh, in, in you're gonna find out the uh, intersection with the x-axis. Uh, I say that the uh, the point is H, and the start with the H and the point F, you can find out the uh, intersection. I then you find the point in this uh, in this graph, and uh, what you get is like the uh, the thickness would be nine inches, because the uh, this one is close to nine inches. If it's something in between, you probably need to find out the appropriate more accurate value. Say that is between here. That probably nine point. Uh, well, for this for this example, that probably nine point two inches, something like that. Uh, so that's the way for you to identify the thickness of the PCC slab. But but remember that for the rigid pavement, this is not done yet. It's just a one iteration for the rigid pavement design. We have to do more. Uh, this this equation is the one from the uh, for the rigid pavement design 
this is an uh, empirical equation from the actual method. We know the uh, the uh, the value of the the uh, LEF uh, load equivalence factor. Uh, actually, the, that's not the LEF. The uh, the uh, guess that's the related to ESA. Yeah, sorry. ESAL is a um, <clears throat> it's in the function of a lot of variables and especially is also in the function of the thickness of the PCC slab. So the uh, in the uh, normal graph, when we when you do the estimation, it's a uh, <clears throat> it shows the uh, shows a uh, cross relationship between the ESAL and also the uh, thickness of the PCC slab. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not the uh, yes, yeah. This is still LEF. Sorry, I just uh, get a uh, some something wrong about it. Wrong note. The, this is still the uh, LE, LEF, and you know that the LEF will affect the estimation of the ESAL. So that so in your estimation of your ESAL, it's actually determined by the uh, thickness of the TCC, uh, PCC slabs. But uh, in in the application of the previous normal graph. You need to know what the uh, ESAL is. So this is an, uh, this there is some conflict there. You have to know the thickness before uh, in order to calculate the uh, ESAL. But you need to use ESAL to find out the uh, thickness. So this is in a loop. So in order to solve this problem, we need to do some iterations by assuming one value of the thickness and calculate the ESAL and use the ESL, ESL to calculate the thickness and then check whether the thickness is the same to the one we assumed previously. If it's not, we need to do iteration until we match them. So that's the whole process for us to do the, uh, to do the uh, design of the rigid payment. Uh, also here is in the table about uh, what's the uh, load equivalency factor for the rigid payment under the specific thickness and the uh, terminal serviceability index. Uh, and uh, uh, with that, we're going to summarize the procedure to estimate, to conduct the uh, redeployment design, the full procedure. So we're going to start from the uh, material properties. We want to find out the, uh, uh, for the redeployment, we were especially interested in about finding the effective resilient modulus and the composite K values. Here you have to know that the composite K values is related to the uh, it's related to the uh, thickness of the uh, PCC slab, and then and then we're gonna do uh, find out the uh, serviceability loss delta PSI. This is the same to what we explained, and we have to choose the uh, reliability and the standard deviation, and after that we have to assume one value of the PCC slab. Say that uh, based on the past experience, say that the PCC slab should be around the six inches. And then use the table. Use the table. There will be multiple tables for different uh, uh, terminals of stability index, different uh, um, different uh, PC, uh, different thickness of the PCC slab. You can identify the LEF. LEF and then calculate the uh, value of the ESL. This is the next step. And then once you have the ESL, you have the property of the materials uh, and the, the serviceability loss. You can then uh, determine the uh, thickness of the PCC slab. Uh, I should say that this is a, a D star, uh, not D star, D prime. Uh, just say that this is D prime instead of the uh, D to be differentiated from the assumed value. Uh, this is from the normal graph, and at most of the case, D prime will not be the same to D. So if it's not the same, you need to uh, you need to follow do the iteration, and uh, assume a new value. Uh, you can assume D a new value. You can assume D equal to D prime for the new iteration, and then repeat this process. Repeat the process at the step four and five. Uh, until you find that the value of d uh, with d to d prime, you find another d double prime. Until you find that the uh, d prime equal to d double prime, then you stop the iteration. Say that the the value, the ultimate value you calculate, 
it's the thickness of the PCC slab. So this is about the uh, whole procedure to do the rigid pavement design. Um, the key part is about how to use the assumed uh, assumed thickness to calculate the uh, LEF and estimate the uh, the ESAL, and then follow the iteration to find out this uh, the steady value of the slab thickness. Okay, so with that we finished the introduction about the uh, rigid pavement design for the uh, uh, with the ASTO method. And uh, uh, we will also have some um, typical design, rigid pavement design in Canada. For example, if, if we are here, we only consider the rigid pavement design. So if if, uh, we, are, if we are talking about the sidewalk or the driveways uh, or the parking lot, that will be quite straightforward depending on the number of the vehicles parked there, the number, the, the load of the vehicles parked in the uh, in that regions uh, the thickness will be around 100 and 100 to 125 millimeters and for the uh, for some uh, local roads or the access roads uh, or the secondary highways it could be around 150 to 200 meters and for the major highway major highways or the major freeways that will be uh, the thickness will be even larger so this will be some typical values in Canada. Um, and uh, regarding to the ex examples in Ontario, uh, for example, if you go to see the Highway 407 is in the kind of the rigid pavement design. Uh, if you can still remember what we, the examples we mentioned previously, there are some failed pavement design for the uh, Highway 407 where they, they did not place any sub-base behind the uh, PC slab and cause a lot of uh, cracks there. So they do some improvement and uh, apply the surface layer there and the pavement performance is much better now. Uh, for the Highway 407, uh, the, uh, the thickness of the PCC slab is around 280 millimeters. Uh, not the, uh, not the, it's the total length, the total length is about the uh, 280 millimeters. Um, and also it applies the, uh, the 100 millimeter asphalt treated uh, uh, open graded uh, uh, layers and the uh, 200 millimeter granule base layer. Uh, in Nova Scotia, the, with the Highway 104, the PCC slab will have the thickness of 250 millimeters. Uh, in Quebec, the uh, uh, it did the the uh, auto route 13 they have the thickness of the PC slab is around uh, 270 millimeters. So th those will be some typical examples. If you search online, there will be some uh, there will be more um, design examples about the rigid pavement, and you can see how they're going to be how they will be differentiated uh, at different regions depending on the weather conditions, the traffic loadings, and also the specific materials in that area. Okay, uh, with that, I finished the uh, introduction about uh, the about the ASTO method for the rigid pavement. Uh, do you have any questions about it? Uh, again, with this with these materials, you will be able to finish the uh, the problem one in the uh, in the homework assignment four. Uh, any questions? Any questions you uh, you want to ask? Uh, yeah, feel free to raise your hand or leave your message in the meeting chat. Okay. Um, if there's no questions, I will close this one and let's jump to the uh, review of the final exam. So here is the review of the final exam. And uh, first of all, definitely that will be the time and the format of the exam. Um, so the time is scheduled by the university. That will be next Monday from 4 to 6.30 p.m. It's two and a half an hour. And the format is exactly the same to all the uh, 
midterm exams is open book, open notes. The exam sheet will be distributed on every to learn at 4 p.m. on that day. So you will be able to download the uh, exam sheet there. Uh, you have to follow the instructions from the exam sheet uh, to work on all the questions. And once you're done, you can um, you can uh, submit your uh, answer to the uh, photo finder. And I have created the photo there, and it will be available for you to upload. And the, the exam, uh, even though I say that the exam will be ended at uh, 4 30, uh, but I want to give you some extensions, uh, which is about uh, 15 minutes to upload the uh, answer sheet. So officially, you can uh, uh, upload your answer until 6 uh, 645. So that will be the hard deadline. Uh, so that, but again, I will recommend you to leave the sufficient time to upload your answers. And uh, uh, also, you can upload multiple versions, but we will take the latest one. Uh, before you upload any uh, any versions, double check whether you have all the um, all the pages scanned, or if you are using your electric uh, version, make sure that you have uh, all the uh, all the pages uh, labeled and uh, uh, attached, including the figures in your answer sheet and then upload to the uh, Dropbox. Um, and I will also, similar to the midterm exam, I will also create a meeting under the exam channel in Teams. And I will recommend, uh, encourage everyone to join the uh, meeting during the uh, exam. So I will be there, the TA will be there. We're gonna monitor any potential questions that you have during the exam. Uh, you can leave your message there for your questions and we're going to reply you. And uh, uh, well, in the meanwhile, I'll try to mute myself to make sure that it is, well, I will not interrupt anyone during the exam. Um, and for the uh, for the format, the, uh, the exam will have the score of 100 points. 20% uh, of them will be 20% or less. It's just approximate value, 20% or less will be for the midterm and 80% of them will enter the topic uh, after the midterm exam. And I'll give you more details about what topics will be covered. And it also has two parts. The first part is about the fundamental knowledges. It has 10 questions, uh, 10 concept questions. Again, as what I uh, explained previously, focus on uh, listing all the keywords instead of writing a long text. Uh, we want to see uh, see those keywords and grade, give your uh, marks based on those keywords. And for part two is some calculations, which will be similar to uh, your homework assignment and examples in the class. It will be the simple calculation questions. Uh, you can use uh, Excel or you can use the, uh, the uh, any calculators to complete the calculation. Um, but I we want to see the uh, steps for you to get your result. And also for the uh, final exam, I will provide some critical formulas and the uh, figures that you will need to use for the uh, for all the questions. Um, and uh, you have to you have to uh, if if you plan to write everything by your hand, you probably it's better for you to download it and and uh, print it out. Um, and uh, uh, if you write uh, through electrically, then uh, of course, try to double check the uh, figures and the formulas. You have to screw down to the very end of the uh, of the um, exam sheets, find out the uh, those formulas and the figures. Um, so that's the format. Do you have any questions for the uh, exam? Uh, any any questions? Okay, uh, probably I will just uh, try to, uh, uh, let me try to finish the introduction about topics which will be covered. So uh, first for the topics after the midterm exam, we uh, went through the analysis of the traffic loadings, the, uh, the stress and strain analysis of the flexible and rigid pavements, and we also introduced different methods for the design of the flexible and rigid pavements. 
um, for the uh, traffic loading, uh, we have defined the different uh, axial types, the single axial, tending axial, and trailing axial. You have to know their uh, definitions, what's the difference of these uh, three different types of the axials. And uh, uh, the also, we have introduced a way to uh, evaluate the traffic loadings. Uh, it could be based on the fixed traffic, where we focus on the uh, equivalent single wheel load, ESWL. Uh, that could be uh, depending on multiple criterions, the uh, equivalent vertical stress criterion, equivalent vertical deflection, uh, the equal tensile strain, equal uh, contact pressure, or equal contact radius. We have detailed definitions about each criterion and the way to calculate the uh, ESWL. This is uh, the first definition for the uh, traffic loading, which is the uh, fixed traffic. We are, uh, but more importantly, we uh, introduced the uh, fixed vehicle definition where we have the equivalent single axle load defined for the pavement design. So uh, to calculate the equivalent single axle load, you need to know the equivalent axle load factor or the load equivalence factor. Uh, these factors will be different for the flexible pavement and rigid pavements. You need to know how to find out these uh, parameters, how to calculate these factors, for the estimation of the ESAL. And once you know the ESAL, you know the average, uh, annual average daily traffic, you can, uh, and also the growth rate, you can find out the ESAL for the design period of the uh, payment. So that's the first part about the traffic loading analysis. And the second part is the stress and strain analysis. We start with the uh, analysis for the flexible payment. Uh, we, are, we, will, we will introduce the tensile and vertical stress, how we're going to estimate tensile and vertical stress, what's the mechanism of the top-down cracking, and uh, how we're going to model the single wheel load. Uh, regarding to the estimation or calculation of the stress, the stress and the strain, we have the um, multi-layer elasticity theory, and uh, uh, more importantly, we apply the simplified uh, approaches. Uh, for example, if we have a homogeneous ground, you have to know how to calculate the uh, stress and strain with the boosting elastic solution. If we have a two-layer system, you can use the uh, Burmester, um, the Burmester theory. And also, you can apply the old model approach to find out the uh, equivalent thickness of different layers and then do the calculation with the boosting elastic solution. Uh, so that's for the uh, flexible payment. Uh, Additionally, we introduced the stress and strain analysis for the rigid pavement, where the uh, we have introduced uh, first introduced the type of the types of the rigid pavement distress and the potential mechanics. Uh, this one has been uh, also been introduced in the at the very beginning of this lecture uh, of this class, and then for the models applied for the. Uh, rigid pavement analysis, we uh, specify some assumptions. Uh, we will assume that the sub-base, uh, sub-grade layer is in the uh, wrinkle, wrinkle base, and you can apply the uh, beam actions for the uh, rigid pavement. And uh, uh, we also define the uh, importance of the modulus of the sub reaction for the estimation of the rigid pavement, and uh, uh, provide the analytical solutions for the uh, uh, the rigid pavement, they are the rigid slabs with the infinite dimensions. And uh, uh, another thing about the environmental impact, including the temperature and the moisture contents to the rigid pavement to the PCC slab, especially their stress and deflections, are uh, also include introduced. And uh, we also provide the rest guard methods to uh, find out the uh, the maximum stress and strain for the uh, for the PCC slab. With the closed uh, close form equations, uh, you, you should know how to use the rest guard method to calculate the stress and strain. Okay, and uh, that's the uh, that's the stress and strain for the rigid pavement. And regarding to the uh, pavement design, uh, for the flexible pavement design, we introduced the uh, we actually focus on the uh, uh, the ME method. Uh, mechanistic and empirical methods, uh, but we also introduced two empirical methods. The first one is the uh, GBE method, which is the one applied in, uh, in Ontario, 
and we need to consider what the factor could be considered for the for this method, how we can uh, apply the GBE factor, and how to calculate the uh, equivalent thickness of the pavement. And uh, uh, one of the common me empirical methods that we're going to apply is called the AI method. Um, it could be applied for the full depth and uh, deep strength as for the pavement. The design. Uh, the design criteria is actually based on the uh, the vertical crackings and the uh, permanent deformation, which will be the rotting. And uh, uh, regarding to the uh, factors, we need to consider for the AI method. We have to think about the uh, the traffic. What's the ESAL? How to calculate the ESAL? Uh, the load equivalency factor and the truck factors, which will be applied for the estimation of the ESAL. The subgrade properties and the uh, the uh, climate conditions. Also, we need to know how to use the chart to find out the thickness of the uh, asphalt concrete layers. Um, for the flexible pavement design, this is one of the major part we gonna uh, we have included in this class. It's also the uh, uh, combination about all the knowledge we learned previously. So we have to consider the design factor, including the design life, the traffic analysis. The reliability of the pavement, environmental effect, the serviceability loss, the resilient modulus of the uh, or different layers, and also the drainage systems. And the, uh, for the design, we need to know how to calculate, how to find out the structure number through the uh, normal graph. And uh, uh, to find out those values, uh, once you have these values, you can you need to use the structure coefficient and the drainage coefficient to calculate the um, to calculate the uh, the thickness of each layer. So that's the uh, that's the one of the critical part. You need to know how to use the um, how to use the uh, the normal graph to do the ca uh, to do the design. And we also introduce some information about how the uh, ASTO method is uh, applied in Ontario. We have a slightly different um, truck vectors, load equivalency vectors, and we also introduced the Ontario truck models to, uh, to identify the truck volumes. And uh, there will be uh, another variable, which is called the pavement condition index PCI, to uh, app it's also applied to represent uh, the uh, pavement serviceability index. And uh, you have to know how to calculate the uh, resilient modulus. Uh, so that's for the flexible pavement design. Uh, for regarding to the uh, regarding to the rigid pavement design, uh, we only introduced the ASTO method. Uh, most of the procedures will be the same. Uh, one of the most important difference is the calculation of the modulus of subgrade reaction. We need to know how to find out the composite K value, and then find out the effective K value based on the uh, considering the seasonal variation and also do the adjustment for the loss of the support. And with that, we can find out the uh, ultimate efficient effective K values, which will be applied for the normal graph to find out the uh, thickness of the PCC slab. Also for the uh, ASTO method, we need to think about the modulus of the rupture, the load transfer coefficient, the, uh, the, uh, the drainage conditions, uh, we need to we need to know how to calculate the traffic uh, traffic volumes. The uh, load equivalence factor is related to the thickness of the PCC slab. It's also related to the average annual daily traffic and also the growth factors. Uh, we um, uh, we with, re with regarding to the uh, design, we actually follows the uh, erosion models to uh, design the uh, rigid pavement and. Uh, uh, for the ASTO method, we will actually focus on utilizing the uh, utilizing the normal graph to find out the thickness of the PCC slab. And also, as I just explained in the lecture, we also need to do the iteration to find out the uh, the thickness uh, to make sure that the estimated thickness is the same to the uh, assumed value. So that's for the rigid pavement design, which will uh, which will conclude all the topics after the midterm exam. And uh, uh, there are also some topics before the midterm exams, including the pavement types and distress, the soil properties, uh, subgrade structures, the drainage uh, 
design and astro technologies. Uh, I will go through them very quickly, and uh, it only takes around 10% uh, of the uh, all your uh, all, all those points in the final exam. So for the uh, payment types, you need to know the flexible and rigid payments. Uh, what's the types? Uh, what's the uh, how the stress is distributed, and what's the typical uh, structure supplied? And also, this applies to rigid payment. And for the interlocking uh, concrete payment, just know what's the what's the uh, what's this type of the payment it is. And for the distress, uh, it's actually from the uh, tutorial one how to know the type of the major payment distress for the flexible and rigid payments and the potential reasons for this uh, type of the failures to the payment structure, the traffic loadings, the weather conditions, the moistures, and so on. And uh, uh, the second topic would be the soil property. We have to know how to classify the soils based on the ASTO method or the USCS method. And also the grain size distribution is one of the important uh, criteria for us to identify the, uh, the soil types. And uh, regarding to the soil properties for the pyramid design, we have learned the modulus of the subgrade reaction, the modulus of the resilience, and the CBR values. You need to know how to do the experiment to get those uh, values and uh, what's the relationship between those variables. Um, for the modulus of the resilience, we have the MR test. Uh, you have to know how to uh, analyze the data and how to conduct the regression to find out relationship between the resilient modulus and the bug stress and the deviator stress. Uh, for the CBR value, you need to know the CBR test, the procedure of the CBR test, how to analyze the data, how to do the correction for the, uh, the test data. Uh, for the uh, soil improvement, this one is not included in the, in the midterm, but I hope you can also review it uh, when you prepare for the final exam. Uh, we have learned the effect of the compaction, whether it can uh, usually going to improve the, uh, the, mod the resilient modulus. Uh, there are also some ben other benefits for the compaction, and they have to know the effect of the moisture contents to the soil property. And if you have, if you experience some uh, issues about the uh, the poor conditions of the soil, you need to think about some stabilization methods, including the uh, geosynthetic methods and adding some other mixtures uh, to improve the uh, property of the soil. And uh, our, the next thing we cover is the subgrade structure. Uh, we focus on the uh, introduction about the uh, impact of the moisture contents and the uh, temperature uh, to the property of the subgrade materials. Uh, for the uh, effect of the water, moisture contents, we focus on the impact to the resilient modulus, the stiffness of the, uh, of the subgrade soils, and also if what happens if the soil is, in, is an expensive soil, and how it's going to affect the uh, performance of the pavement. And uh, uh, regarding to the low temperature effect, we will have the uh, we analyzed the first heat effect. We have analyzed the cost, the potential uh, capital raise, and also how to deal with the first uh, susceptible soils. And uh, the uh, we also introduced more details about the effect of the moisture and compaction levels, um, how the uh, the moisture contents and the compaction levels affect the uh, the property of the soils and what's the cause of the model pumpings for the rigid pavement. And there are also some other introduction about the unbound granular aggregates and the bound-based materials. Those, those are just uh, some concepts. Uh, you can uh, go through them quickly, but it's not necessary for you to manage them. And uh, the last thing we're going to cover is the uh, drainage uh, design. So we have introduced the drainage materials, some aggregates, the geotextiles, and the pipes applied for the uh, for the drainage design. You need to especially need to know the retention and the uh, retention and the permeability criteria applied for the selections of the drainage materials. And uh, uh, one another important thing is about the estimation of the inflows and uh, uh, including the estimation of the surface infiltration, groundwater seepages, the melt water from the ice links, and also the uh, 
using those values to find out the design inflow for the um, permanent structure. And uh, uh, we also need to see how we can uh, evaluate the drainage layers, uh, evaluate its uh, uh, capacity, steady and unsteady state capacities. And if we apply uh, collector pipes, uh, how are going to select the collector pipes? What kind of the gaps you have to choose? What kind of radius or the pipes you need to select? Um, the last thing is the uh, as for technologies, we focus on the introduction about the uh, super pale mix design, uh, including four steps, the material selection, the uh, design of the aggregate structures, the uh, designed, uh, design of the binder contents, and the moisture sensitivity analysis. There will be more details about how this uh, four step is conducted in the in the lectures. Uh, I think that's all about the uh, review of the final exam. So um, with that, I probably will conclude this one. Do you have any questions for now for the uh, exam and uh, anything else? Uh, uh, I only have a question. Yes. Uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, for the question number two and the Oh, in the assignment. Uh, I don't have the. But you can ask the question. I don't have the uh, the problem in my in in this computer. But you can you can ask the questions. Yeah. Okay. So for uh, for question two, it uh, it has um the base and some sub base for uh. Uh, for the Ashto method. Yes, so yes. I should use the MR, which is, for example, if I if I am calculating for the surface, then I, I should use uh, the MR for the base. Uh, you, you have all these uh, all these values about the uh, base course and the sub base course, right? Yeah, uh, so it, so I have the I have the um, the MR, the the resilient models for the base. Uh, uh, it's uh, from 300 to 400. Yes, you need to choose one value based on your what well, this is a kind of open question. You need to choose the value based on um, some local road uh, criterions. I did not specify the, the value, but you have to choose someone between 300 and 400. So it's up to you. Uh, this is an assumption you're going to make. So the problem is that either um, when I when I, for example, choose the 300, I could not find it on the graph uh, as a value for uh, uh, well, the probably chart. In that case, uh, oh, you also need to pay attention about the uh, the unit. Here is the megapascal. In the chart, it's the is psi. So we need to convert them to psi. Uh, I did the conversion. Okay. Uh, if it's a uh, if it's that case, it probably means that you uh, <laughs> you did not get the. Uh, Appropriate values. I, I, when I do that, I did not see any issues about it. Um, let me just. Okay. Um. So with that, I think you need to think about uh, utilizing the uh, sub subgrade materials using the CBR values to calculate the MR for the uh, for the uh, subgrade. Uh, there's a relationship between the CBR and MR, right? Using that one to calculate it. So should I should I use the MR for uh, the base or the sub base? Oh, uh, you have to use them for the subgrade. The sub so subgrade for the Ashton method? Yes, yes. We 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 just did, we we did we did another way in the in the lecture. Yeah, it's a uh, that one gives you all gives you all the informations. Um, so this is actually a little bit different. You need to find out the structure number of uh, all the layers. The layer one, two, and three. Uh, I let me show you. Uh, it's it's a, a little bit different from the oh, not this one. It's in the tw uh, not twenty five. I guess it's twenty five. Yes. So you can see that um, get this one. You can see that the uh, when you do the calculation, do the calculation, you you know the sub base subgrade layer, right? 
uh, you can start with this one and calculate all the information about. You actually can make an assumption about what's the thickness of this, of this uh, uh, two layers. And but but you can calculate the value of the uh, structure number three for all these three layers. And you just need to the problem just wants you to find out what's the thickness of the surface course. Uh, yes, for the, but for the for the surface course, I should uh, should use the MR of the base course. Yes, yes. No, no you need to find out the SN three, and then calculate the uh, given this thickness, the thickness of these two layers to find out what's the value of the uh, surface cost. Say, um, let me see. Uh, would you mind if I extend this lecture for a couple minutes? <laughs> okay, so uh, you make an assumption like this. Uh, this problem having the assumptions about the thickness would be around, uh, uh, I have no idea. Let me just check. Like the uh, base case, say that the base case is uh, 300 meters and the sub base is a uh, 400. 450, yeah. Okay, so this is 300 and 450. Uh, I don't know, this is the millimeters you need to con convert them to inches. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I don't have the, what's the value of the inches for now. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, just say that the thickness is a D2 and D3. These are given, you know the, the values, right? Yeah. So basically, basically you the the one that you applied is a uh, uh, SN three sure equal to or uh, at least uh, um smaller to equal to or smaller to, but you can choose the uh, equal to with that you can find out the minimum value of the thickness. Uh, equal to uh, R A one times D one plus A two M two times D two plus a3 m3 times d3 you can assume the value as you know the value of d2 and d3 you can assume some value of a2 and m2 uh, you can even use the values in this in this example in this example here and then with that you can with the value calculated about the sn3 and the value of a2 from your review or from this example you get a d1 will be uh, SN3 minus uh, A2M2 D2 plus A3M3 D3 divided by A1. Mm -hmm. so this is the minimum value. It's, a, it's not exactly as this example. <laughs> it's just giving uh, a, way, a way to think about the design backward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. Uh, you can also simplify that one if you say that you don't want to include the subbase in your design. That's also fine. Either way is fine. It's all based on your assumptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you so much. Good. Yes. Okay, uh, is there any other questions? Okay, uh, if we don't have any questions, I think that will be for the lecture today. Again, I really appreciate your attendance for for and also your effort in this class. Um, I'll just uh, prepare for the final exam and uh, go through the examples and the homeworks. Uh, try to uh, try to prepare, uh, finish your homework four, homework four as early as possible, and then I can upload the uh, solution to you. I also given a reminder that we're gonna have the. Uh, review session, not review, the Q&A session on Wednesday for the lecture time and uh, also for the uh, tutorial session, the TA will be there for any potential questions. Okay. Hey, I think that'll be all. Uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, I will see you in the Q&A session or in the exam. Okay, uh, with that I will close the meeting.